So uh, I'll talk a minute about thoughts and goals for introductions. Uh, there's been a lot of questions and um, there actually isn't a uh, nice laid out rule book for this. So I'm sort of figuring it out as I go. But at the core, uh, when it comes to introducing beavers, we always have to keep in mind that they do have the ability to be aggressive with one another. Um, they can be very territorial, they can be very protective. Um, and so we, because we don't fully understand the exact behavioral mechanism behind that, uh, it, for example, is it primarily just mature animals? Is it, um, you know, mixed, mixed genders? Are they more uh, tolerant of one another um, There's just lots of questions like that. But anyway, uh, so what I have right now are three very different types of beavers uh, That I would love to see all together in the past uh, when I had Huck Finn and Sawyer they um, Were able to all be introduced at a very young age um, with very little issue and then also with Tater and Turnip, the same thing. They were very young, they bonded together really quickly, no issue. So I know that at a certain, under a certain age at least, uh, those introductions are no problem. Uh, when I was introducing Tulip to um, Tater and Turnip, uh, it was going okay, although Tater was showing a little bit of aggression, Turnip was very um, accepting of Tulip. So I was taking it very slowly, and that's uh, unfortunately when Tulip got very sick. So later, prior to Tater and Turnip deciding they wanted to, to check out the great big wild world, um, I would bring Tulip up to Tater and Turnip's enclosure and as soon as Tulip got uh, uh, started to smell them or they came out to see her she would literally turn around and dash away like run as fast as she could away from the cage um, so that was obviously to me um, you know a concern with the idea that Tulip might be able to live with Tater and Turnip again or not um, so that was a question but uh, obviously now um, something I'm, I'm not factoring in so we have Tulip, who is, for all purposes, a very healthy beaver. Uh, Tulip is, is a little small, uh, definitely a little stunted, um, but a tough, very tough uh, beaver. The behavioral quirks that she has, I, I don't see Tulip as being aggressive, but because her back is still very sensitive and she never really learned the proper grooming technique, there is some concern that just accidentally she might bite into another beaver, if, especially if they try to groom her. So that's something I'll have to keep an eye on. And that other beaver, whoever that might be, might take that the wrong way, might take it as aggression. So it's something I just have to think about. Um, but as far as Tulip is concerned, she's a very um, easygoing uh, beaver. So definitely, I don't think I have anything to worry about uh, dominance wise or stuff like that. Um, Stormy. Stormy is an unknown animal. I'm assuming is a sub-adult female, uh, just based on what I know. She's obviously got, had some incredible trauma in her past. Uh, the poor thing, I've just, she's, she's doing so well. She's, she's growing. She's, she's improving. We're taking it day by day. Um, I have, she does not give me any indication if she's got aggressive tendencies or if she's going to be super passive. Um, it could be if I put Tulip in right now, she might treat Tulip as if it's another human and be very afraid. Um, I have no idea. Uh, so that one's going to be sort of interesting. Um, when that day comes of when we try to figure that out and then of course we got petunia petunia is uh the a super feisty super healthy super well adjusted amazing little baby beaver and when it comes to petunia it's just a matter of her being large enough to be able to swim i want her to be able to swim dive get out of the water uh, and do those maneuvers so that there's no accidental um accidents once she's she's in so um, right now, my game plan is we are going to set up Stormy uh, in a enclosure scenario where she has access to um, a dry area and then an area um, with one of these big pools. 
we're going to do the exact same thing right next to that cage for tulip so tulip is getting an upgrade um, where she always has access to one of these so uh, thanks to a very very generous donation that we received along with um, um, some of the continuing support from from our regular supporters which we're so appreciative of um, we were able to get more of these large enclosures from tractor supply as well as another pool so we are going to set up stormy and tulip identical scenarios side by side and just sort of let them get used to the idea of being next to one another at all times not from a distance uh, and then petunia will move into tulips current uh, set up just so that we can keep a close eye on her and then to uh, petunia will come over for visits when she's large enough so that she has um, you know a little bit more supervision and then depending on how tulip petunia stormy how they all do uh, we will uh, take it you know play it by ear and then the goal being to have them all being able to to be together we are also uh, getting a final bid on fencing so where you see now this this area in front of the barn is going to have a very tall fence and these enclosures are actually going inside that fence so we could open a gate and will you please stop getting me wet we'll be able to open the gate and they can actually go out into a larger paddock enclosure with uh, supervision and protection so the idea is uh, you know at some point we'll open doors up and allow them the chance to interact with one another um, but also in an, a secondary uh, enclosure area with the fence um, and I think that's hi hi yeah what do you think love you I love you okay I think that is the best plan of action right now so fencing fencing uh, contractor will be coming in uh, to give us a final measurement and bid we're also going to do some grading uh, in this immediate area longer term if you look back in here, so past the barn into that area, this um, of forest, that is where I want to fence about three acres. I want to build a pond, fence it in at about three acres, and that is going to be the soft release site. Um, the the fencing is going to give them a certain level of protection. Obviously, uh, if they wanted to, to leave, leave, there's not gonna stop them from digging out or climbing out, but it would at least provide some level of, of, uh, of a boundary. We will set them up with a lodge. We will continue to feed them like we always have, and um, we'll see how that goes. So that'll be step one just prior to release although technically when they go into that area if they want to leave they can and then after they get uh, comfortable and showing us that they do really well in that situation then it's the actual release time and that's when they move to that larger pond that we have on the other side of our property uh, we are acquiring that land um, everything is taking forever but we are uh, we should be closing on that loan here pretty soon um, and then we'll want to apply for grants and funding to uh, improve that area a little bit just to give us a little better access um, for monitoring for research things like that so uh, I know I want I, I was a little bit uh, um, talkative here uh, had a lot uh, to cover but hopefully um, those of you who are interested that helps answer some questions and sort of to tells you where my mindset is uh, at this point stormy because it is a single be beaver who we have no clue where it came from um, we have no no knowledge of uh, the right habitat where home home territory is we know nothing so it's going to be in stormy's best interest to be paired up with petunia and tulip and just to have a beaver family um, and this is something that um, i'm not sure how often has been done so i'll be documenting the whole process just to better understand how these adult beaver reintroduction programs might go uh, and hopefully learn a little bit more about what 
what beavers get along and which what they don't and maybe some reasoning behind it so um big goals making our way uh thanks for listening